They say we're all products of our environment, but there's no better example of this idea in the NBA than Jason Tatum. Not only is the forward one of the most skilled players in league history, and not only is he one of the fiercest scorers of our generation, Tatum's always had a star-studded team behind him that's made the Celtics perennial contenders. Thanks. Inside, Tatum spins and he puts it in. Celtics by one. But despite all this, Jason's been unable to elevate the team to the next level. The Celtics have continued to accumulate exits in the playoffs against inferior teams, and the truth is, among other factors, the forward is the one to blame. His performances in the two most important games in the recent history of the franchise have been really disappointing. We're talking about Game 7 against the Miami Heat during the last playoffs, and Game 6 of the 2022 Finals. Game 4 did not work out quite well, at least in the early going for Golden State. Tatum will eventually need to win a ring to be considered a generational great, and it seems like he's never going to get a better opportunity than the one presented this season. It's time for Jason to put his money where his mouth is. It's certainly not the norm. It's not the norm to be drafted third overall, and the team you land on has the likes of Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hayward, Al Horford, and Jalen Brown. But those were the returns of that legendary Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett trade. The Celtics were blessed with a scorer who would eventually become the face of the franchise, and it looked like management had built a solid foundation to dominate the conference. But first, they had to wait for LeBron to lead the East. The Cavaliers knocked off the Celtics twice in 2017 and 2018 to prove they were still the team to beat. However, when King James left the conference, the throne had been vacated. It was Boston's chance to conquer it. Nothing could have been farther from the truth. The Celtics only managed to win the conference once in the five years since LeBron took his talents to California, which they did in 2022, but would lose the finals to the Warriors in six games in that infamous Jason Tatum game. The basketball with Jordan Poole defending him. Green double teams and deflects it. Draymond Green. And During the other four seasons, they would lose to Milwaukee, to Brooklyn, and to Miami twice. Pretty disappointing results for rosters that should have been capable of contending for anything. Besides, the Boston Celtics are, as of today, the best team in the entire league. And I'd go so far as to say by far. Starting with the backcourt, which is probably the best on defense in the history of the league. And I'm not exaggerating, Drew Holiday and Derek White are two of the best perimeter defenders in the league, and they play together. I can only think of one backcourt that might be better on defense, and that's the one that Mike Conley and Tony Allen formed in those Memphis Grizzlies grindhouse years. But the Celtics combo is much better on offense. And then there's Jalen Brown, an all-star, a second offensive option that any team would envy, another defensive threat that elevates the game on that side of the court. And if that weren't enough, the fifth and final piece of the Celtics puzzle is none other than Kristaps Porzingis. The Latvian center's proven to be a two-way player who should be important in any contender. The team perfectly complements the play of its superstar Tatum, and with his leadership, the Celtics currently have the best record in the NBA. Jason's averaging 27 points, 8.5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game, with solid shooting percentages of 47% from the field and 38% on three-pointers. Advanced stats indicate that he's an above-average player on both ends of the floor. However, performances like the other day's game against the Denver Nuggets, in which Tatum only scored 15 points on 13 shots from the field, continue to raise questions among the fans of the franchise. These stinkers that the forward tends to make from time to time have a common factor. Most of them come against big-time opponents. It's also absolutely true that the Celtics aren't worried about that game against the Denver Nuggets, nor the previous loss against the defending champs in which Tatum scored just 22 points on 24 shots attempted. He knows to get off the ball. Tatum with his first field. Sidestep three by Tatum. In the end, it's two more losses during the regular season that are of little use to a team that's clearly going to finish first in the conference. The problem is that those games were against an opponent that has a good chance of being their matchup in the NBA Finals. Then there will be no margin for error. And that's the reason for the worries. This is another year that Tatum's not going to win the regular season MVP. I mean, it's not like winning the MVP is easy, not by a long shot, but it is disappointing that the forward is out of the running considering his status and his team's record. We all know that if any candidate who hasn't won the award yet and can do so, it's one of Luka Doncic, Shea Gilgis Alexander, or Jason himself. The Mavs season probably eliminates the Slovenian from the race, so the player of those three with real chances is the Oklahoma City Thunderguard. Tatum plays a pivotal role in most of the Celtics' wins, and when he has his night, he's virtually unstoppable. Tatum has to fire with a shot clock rolling down. But the problem is those nights when he's not able to generate offense like usual. 
It seems that, in some ways, Tatum's still a step below other superstars who are becoming the face of the league. He's not on the level of Giannis, the Joker, or Embiid, who are the last three NBA MVPs. The forward needs to finally take that step forward that'll put him squarely in the discussion of being the best player in the league, but to do that, the first thing he has to do is lead his team by example. So what's the problem? Well, the clock is ticking. Let me be clear, he's 26 years old. It's not like he's finishing his prime or anything and it would be normal for him to still have a decade left in the NBA, but he's running out of time to take that last step forward that he needs to take to be a generational great. Jason's no longer considered one of the players with the most potential, as he's been for all these years. As of today, Tatum's simply one of the best players in the league, but any rational person knows that he's neither top dog nor even top three. My point is that Tatum's running out of time to become the face of the NBA. Those expectations are incredibly high for any rookie, but not for a player who from the moment he came into the league showed what he was capable of. But now a new generation is coming on the heels, with names like Anthony Edwards or Victor Wembanyama threatening to take the spot that Jason still aspires to. Although his opinion is different. Who do you think's the best player in the NBA right now? Uh, myself. Recently, Tatum said in an interview with Malika Andrews that he considered himself the best player in the entire NBA, something he already dropped during last season. I'm one of, humbly, one of the best basketball players in the world, you know? But this time, he didn't say he was one of the best. And while I think most of us watching this video agree that this is false. And I'm not saying that Tatum's lying. A player of his quality has gotten to where he is because of that ambition and self-confidence. So in his eyes, this may be the reality. Not to mention the tendencies of players to raise their spirits when interviewed by Malika Andrews or Taylor Rooks. And I don't play to lose, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna give it a five. Five rings by 28. But the truth is, no. Jason is not in that conversation of the best player in the week. Now then, I'm going to be clear. The forward surely has the talent to be one. What the hell, watching Tatum play feels like watching the best player in the league in many Celtics games. But precisely what differentiates superstars from generational players is that ability to perform even when it's not your night. That's basically the difference between the best legends in league history and players who are just tremendously good. He doesn't need to add anything to his game. On both ends, Tatum's a great player. He's able to create a shot, he has size to defend and get to the rim, he's got great handles, and he's got one of the prettiest strokes in the entire league. The only thing he lacks is that mental toughness, that resilience that allows him to pull something out even when nothing's going right, that ability to go one more gear that players like LeBron James, Kevin Durant, or Stephen Curry have been able to use throughout their careers, that mentality of his idol that he's not yet been able to make a reality. In the meantime, until Tatum is able to lead one of the best teams in the league through thick and thin, we'll have to settle for him being a mere superstar.